Welcome to the Pulse with Peter B. I'm your host, Peter Biancomano. Let's get you to the pulse on everything you need to know. And today's show is sponsored by the Pilsner House and Beer Garden. Go visit our friends at 1422 Grand Street. Have a beer, have an awesome watermelon salad, have those awesome ribs, and have a great day time. We are also sponsored by Longshot Pistol and Rifle, Secaucus, New Jersey, providing responsible CCW training only to responsible owners. Visit their huge indoor training center and full service gun store. Start your CCW training today. Longshot Secaucus. And now let's go to an awesome segment that we filmed a little bit earlier on. Speaking of somebody who's always on target here on The Pulse, it is our Places <gasps> Insider. What an and intro. What an intro. <laughs> and that's Daria Davies of <laughs> At Hoboken Eats. Daria, how are you today? Wow, I like that. Always on target. That was always a nice touch. Target, that was right? a very nice touch. Exactly. Very Don't nice worry. As, as the sponsors keep rolling yeah. in, I'll keep coming yeah. up with it. Don't worry guys about quick it. On, guys quick on his feet. Guys quick on his feet. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Daria. Yeah, we, we met. You were here a few weeks ago. You spoke about Dallas, Texas and your trip down there my second home my home away from home the place we're going to talk about today is not even in this country no, we are going global global the talk pulse to me about has where. gone global exactly again. we're gonna have to change one I of know. the mic flags to make a world or something like that so. we're going to dublin going to dublin ireland place yep. that i've never been to why dublin why'd you choose dublin Matt took me there for my birthday no way Matt took me there for my so birthday easy. he said it is really great price really easy to get to just like going to California, we went for three days. To Dublin, Ireland? To Dublin, Ireland for three How days. And I'm were telling you, afterwards. it can be done. We She's weren't exhausted at all. Hear me out. You leave Friday night, you leave yeah. Friday night, sleep on the plane. Okay. Wake up, 9 a.m. In, in Dublin, ready to start your day. When you fly home after three days, you gain the six, seven hours back. Or three, you get like three hours back that when you travel sense. and you come back. We, we left at like 9 a.m. We landed in New Jersey at like 12 noon. Unbelievable. Had my whole day. We landed back on my birthday. And I'm a big birthday gal. So big to birthday. me, didn't want to waste my day flying. Yeah, but isn't it a five like, hour difference or something? Well, maybe it's five. We don't, yeah, it's not, I'm, I'm sorry, you said six. Yeah, 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 it's something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a lot. So I basically am like, I gained six hours on my birthday doing this? This is a genius idea. Oh, my goodness. Six so, more wait, hours of death. Uh, you never got used to the time, I'm assuming. Oh, it's go. It's go. It's See, but Matt calls me an energizer bunny because I can stay up. I just like to go I wonder out. why, man. I, <laughs> I'm just I can just stay awake and go. I love going out to the bars. I can stay up all night. Whereas Matt likes to get to sleep in. Okay. But it was my birthday weekend, so he had to He's push through. He's got to be awake. He had to push through. Now, when, when we, you were uh, on the show last, you spoke about going down to Dallas, Texas with your family. This was just you and Matt. Just Matt and I. Gotcha. Just Matt and I. And we had a, a three. Like, I'm... Dublin check mark. Like I saw, we saw it all. We literally landed Sunday morning, had a quick lunch in one of the little pubs, went directly to the Guinness factory, which is a very cool, must see experience to must do. See. Must see. It's a no brainer. Love Guinness. Never had it in the States. Probably not going to have it in the States. It was so freaking good over there. Okay. I love that. And and this is this is something that I never do on the show, but uh, you know, I tend to do sometimes <laughs> off camera. I'm going to stereotype a little. Ireland. Was this your, there's just a lot of boozing going on where the pubs just hopping the, 24 hours a day. The lads were out. The lads were out, the she said. The lads were out. And we, so we did the Guinness, we did the Guinness factory. Went to Gravity Bar upstairs. Nice. Cool as hell, 360 views. There was random like bagpipes and tap dancers running around and everyone's drinking Guinness. Like it's uh -huh. just, everyone's just lit drinking Guinness. And there's a different beer drunk than like wine drunk. So that's a yes to my question. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> And so at some point every night we went to Temple Temple Bar area. The lads are wild. They oh, were trying to so fight the, the bouncers. Ah, like sorry. it was it was wild. And like it was just the one bar we went into in Temple Bar, I'll never forget, like the the singer was singing, the band because live music everywhere. And I don't know if these were Irish folk songs, but the crowd was going wild. Were you just like? Uh, we, I loved it because I'm like, this is really cool. Like, you don't get to see this in Jersey. <laughs> but then we, you know, we found the bars that played Mr. Brightside and stuff like that, uh, which the lads also were going wild. That's awesome. Now, you know, uh, when you think about Ireland, you know, obviously you don't really think about, you know, a lot of good cuisine there. But I know I'm dead wrong about that. Never had fish and chips in my life. Like butter. Butter in like Ireland. Butter. I've never had it in New Jersey. and. I don't think I ever could. 
Okay. It was so good, so fresh. I had it, we had it everywhere. Beef stew. I called my beef dad. Stew. I go, why have you never made me beef stew? He goes, because my beef stew is not going to be like their beef stew. <laughs> it, I don't At know least what it was. Honest, yeah, right? I don't know what it was. It was just something, it was so good. It was so good. Beef stew, fish and chips. Get, uh, Guinness. Unbelievable. Except for my birthday night, we found an Italian restaurant. I couldn't no way. <laughs> okay, so now, but you know, here's a, 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 a little known fact. When you're in any major city, of course, Dublin uh, is the uh, capital of Ireland, you know, you tend to find really good food from any cuisine. Yes. Correct? Correct. Is that the same for the Italian food there? So, interestingly enough, the Itali there were so many pubs there, because you gotta remember, Dublin's a city. So you got to think of like New York City. There's it's a it's a melting pot, right? Of right. all the different cuisine. Dublin being a city is also a melting pot. So we try to stay away from like the super gimmicky pubs that are just kind of maybe like like a Hard Rock cafe or something like that being right, in New York. Right, right. Um, and we went to the Italian places were all booked up. Okay. Everybody was out having Italian food when we were there. So we found the one restaurant that would let us in. So there was a lot of different cuisines in Dublin, I will say. Exactly. And by the way, folks, as you can see, we're not at the Maxwell Place Pier. We're not in studio. We're in the middle of Washington Street in Hoboken, and anything can happen. The pulse is getting big. Daria, it's all about Daria. Nobody knows Peter B. So, Everyone's you know, looking at Rigatoni excuse, over there. <laughs> exactly. And she has her dog here, too, which is just, you know, putting icing on the cake, yes. as they usually say. All right. So you were only there a short time. Yes. Any other type of uh, restaurants that you went to? All pubs, honestly. We oh, just oh. ate chowder and beef stew and fish and chips. But I will say on our last day, we went to, um, we, we did have brunch at this place called Cafe and Cien. Mm -hmm. It was a cute little French restaurant, great cuisine, really good food. And there was a band playing, three, three, three person band. The next day, we went to Cliffs of Moher. Wow. Right? Cliffs of Moher, the most amazing, spectacular trip ever. It was an eight hour voyage, and it was fantastic. We come back, we go to a pub so I could turn 31. <laughs> I don't know why I just said my age on camera. <laughs> I'm like, used to being young enough where you it's know, okay folks. to say that. And you could tell from the ring she's taken. Ah, uh, 31, though. <laughs> anyway, so I want to turn 31 at a bar, and so we go to the bar, Amen. and the this, it was the same it was the same drummer, and he recognized us. No way. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. As, that it, is as it turned out, Matt and I apparently stood out like sore thumbs and didn't blend in like we thought we did, but he recognized us, which is pretty cool. That is so cool. All right, so now, uh, you know, you, you go there, it looks like you barely slept. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't sleep. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, for a person who can't sleep on a plane, and that's me, of course, you know, um, do you really recommend a three-day trip? Or, you know, should I do it maybe a little longer and go see other areas in the United Kingdom? So when we went to Cliffs of Moor, we were able to see some of the countryside mm -hmm. in the smaller towns we had they stopped and let us have lunch in a super small little like quaint town which was really really nice i want to go back to ireland and do more of that but my point is is you can do ireland you can do dublin in, th in three days you from the united it. states and it's not outlandish like we matt and i got home that that day and we went to super we illusion for lunch no way took a shower freshened up went to illusion i'm sure you knocked out that night i went to napa two day, the next day no. <laughs> With my Which you already spoke about on a previous show, yes. so you're gonna have yes. to go back tying to, it all back, uh, tying it all back. Yep. Our places insider Daria yeah. Peace of that Hoboken Eats. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, we spoke about possibly going to Dallas in the last show. Dublin might be a little further, Dublin so might be a little uh, further, but a longer flight. It, would you do it again? I'm good on Dublin. <laughs> She's good on because I liked it. We, we did everything. You, you, there's nothing else to do. We did every museum too. Got Matt to do museums and, and cathedrals. In three days, folks. In three days. In three, I can't even put my yeah. the very fingers. Three up. days. We did everything there is to do in Dublin. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Thank and she'll be back on a future episode talking about maybe somewhere else that she's been. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, I absolutely love it. Thanks again. All right, folks, we will be right back. Welcome to Hudson River Care and Counseling. Hello, I'm Dr. Pam Pater Ennis, the CEO and founder of Hudson River Care and Counseling with over 30 years of clinical social work experience in therapy. We are a progressive counseling and coaching practice with a diverse team that brings a holistic approach to clients. We offer support, both in person and through digital platforms such as telehealth. Consider us a safe haven that you can trust with care for your mental health needs. Visit our website to set up a consultation today.
Peter Biancomano, your hostess with the mostest of the Pulse with Peter B. Folks, don't forget to go on our Facebook and our Instagram pages by searching The Pulse with Peter B. And like and follow us on each of those platforms. We're constantly updating those pages with previews of each week's segments and cool stories. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our email address at thepulsewithpeterv at gmail.com. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. Peter Biancomano at the beautiful offices of Hudson River Care and Counseling, located at 310 Cedar Lane in Teaneck, New Jersey, and 63A 8th Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. And a person to my right needs absolutely no introduction because we're going to get her a media credential. We might start putting her name in the credits because she's been on so many times before. <laughs> and that is the founder and CEO here at Hudson River Care and Counseling, Dr. Pam Pater Ennis. Great to see you again. It was good to be here. Thank you. Exactly. And Dr. Pam, uh, the last time you were on the show, you really uh, hit a lot of emotion um, <laughs> with a, a, a story that you heard, uh, um, spoke of, I should say, uh, on the air. And we just had to come back and, and just basically talk about another form of therapy, I guess, that you do here, mm -hmm. which is sanctuary healing. Another form of abuse work, really. Oh, goodness. So, you know, I'm, not, I'm you know, uh, uh, confused about what sanctuary healing okay. actually is. So I was okay. wondering if you could explain Thank that you. to me. I know it's, it's sort of an, it's not maybe a new concept, but we kind of, our, our own Alex kind of helped me name this, but it's where it's my sanctuary healing with the idea that it's not my sanctuary healing, but it's a program um, set up to help become yours, um, be personal, and to help people heal. What it is, is based on, I'm old, so it's based <laughs> You're not on old. over 30-some <sighs> years of practice. And in some, and I, as I said in an earlier segment, I, I'm a trauma therapist, um, uh, and I've done a lot of work with all types of sexual abuse, trauma, and child trauma and uh, one of our segments today is going to be one of our, our clinicians is going to talk about child trauma specifically but where this evolved was sort of as a subset of the trauma and that what I began to see many years ago is that people were coming and I should back up I'm, I'm duly trained I'm a social worker but I'm also an ordained minister so mm. I bring that piece to this so people seek me out through my bio with with that credential that I come to this understanding religious trauma. In other words, what I'm so people come in and they've either been abused by clergy themselves. You remember when the Roman Catholic scandal happened, I, I believe in the early two thousands, even in the nineties, I had I worked I was living in Albany at the time. We had a lot of clients, mostly clients, not perpetrators from that. And then I worked with kids who've been perpetrated also by Protestant clergy and even rabbis. And we deal with the trauma of that and get them to come out, tell the stories, maybe put, go to an ecclesial trial, a civil trial. But what's happening now is people are coming with the latest scandals like Hillsong and all that have been in all the media, churches that are sort of blowing up, these really authoritarian evangelical churches, and I'm probably cross, staying fit on boundaries here, but people come to us because they've just been so hurt by authoritarianism. So that's the common denominator of church in general. So Dr. Pian, I'm gonna interrupt you one second. Uh, you started this because people were coming up to you with these issues that they had yeah, in they several just, different religions. I didn't religions. look for it, it just came wow. to me. Unbelievable. I really believe it's like a spiritual thing because people were just coming. I mean, it helps that you're an ordained minister yeah, as well. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. So how do you work uh, with people in this uh, that have this type of um... yeah, um, I, I have um, I've developed in recent years um, really pretty recent years I, I, and I have to get this published but I've been working on a, a workbook a book mm. for healing and I've developed seven stages of healing starting with obviously telling the story and then part of the one of the middle stages is um, really based, if you know psychotherapy, based on what we call narrative therapy, narrative exposure therapy, where you then go probably, we bring in a, a, a clergy person who's a pastor somewhere who's willing to do this work. I have a few churches I'm partnering with, not to go to church, but to come and talk to a clergy person and say, like, not all people are bad. 
And then in the end stages, people start to heal, like like sort of like the final step of AA, like it's about service, like they start to bring back. And I can demonstrate that by a story. Mm -hmm. um, I have a gentleman who I've been working with for a while, a young man in his 30s who um, grew up in church, loved church, um, Protestant, grew up here in New Jersey, and he's very successful. He's a, a master's level nurse at this point. He, he went to a church, was going there. He met, he met someone at the church. He started dating. And when he and his boyfriend were found out that they were gay, they were kicked out of the church. It was a big, large, local evangelical church. He came to me about a year and a half ago, and I've been working with him, and his stories are horrific of what his family first did to him. They rejected him because he was gay. Mm. Um, the church kicked he and his boyfriend out. They're, they're still together, and they're still working through the trauma, and they're probably one of the worst traumas he went through as a young man was that his family put him in what was, is called reparative therapy, as this really evangelical Christian background where they were, he was, the idea is that you're going to heal that person of, from being gay. <sighs> and he came back to but therapy. But you hear that so, not to interrupt you, you yeah, hear yeah. that so much. So and it's just I can't not even. scientifically proven no, at all. No, I know, and then, <laughs> I mean, and I can, I, I, <sighs> advantage of being a clergy person and a social worker, right? I can bridge that scientific and religious gap. 100%. I understand the absolutely. scriptures and I understand the science of it. So anyway, anyway this sorry. young gentleman is just, done amazing healing and he's he's he came as I started to say to to heal the trauma of having been put through that on top of being kicked out of the church on top of his family rejecting him and his boyfriends who had a similar experience two amazing young men who anyone would want them as friends but th their church rejected them and their families rejected them wow so it's just it's so powerful. It's so, so powerful. And and where better to come than to, to see Dr. Pam in these types of situations uh, when you're feeling this? Because mm. she does have, uh, for lack of a better word, the best of both worlds. I mean, she does have a clergy background and, of course, her therapy background, which deals with science and, yeah. and, psychology. and, and psychology yeah. and emotion. Absolutely. So... Dr. Pam, I'm sure there are many, many people who are watching this who are probably going through the same thing, who put their religion or their family beliefs over their own personal beliefs. And, and you know, Hudson River Care and Counseling is a place that they can come. You have wonderful therapists that, you know, we're we going do. to get on. We really on, have uh, a wonderful team. Exactly. So if there are people out there who are watching that, you know, we, might be facing this really, type of challenge, what do you recommend? We is really the recommend step? that they call they can always go on our website, which is www.hudsonrivercareandcounseling.com, but or, or call our main number here, 201-541-8600, and talk to our and young our intake coordinator, who's just amazing. She's fabulous. And um, <laughs> just and she knows to send those people to me. Um, I I. And we're doing some cool things right now. We we now have a support group for people who want that work. We do individual work, and we're actually holding our first retreat ever in August, later this month. Wow! For survivors, again, you're the victims, but you're going to become a survivor, and then eventually you're going to become a thriver. Absolutely, and you know, you know, we have a few seconds here, and it's just amazing to me that stories like this are still happening oh my gosh but it happens more often than not and i'm sure you know you've seen it throughout so i've seen it over the years and you think now in whatever year we're in 2022 we're kind of <laughs> beyond all that but it's still going on incredible <clears throat> well dr pam pateranis our founder well, excuse me the founder she's <laughs> also my founder and apparently and ceo of hudson river care and counseling come and see her uh she gave you the information of the website the phone number and so on and so forth um at 310 cedar lane in teaneck new jersey and 63a 8th street in hoboken <laughs> but of course you do not have to go to the locations because there is telemedicine out there. Yep. So thank you again. I really appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you for having me introduce this very delicate topic. It really is. And I just feel so much more knowledgeable about it now. So I appreciate you sharing whatever you Thank could. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you again. All right, folks, we will be right back. Peter Biancavano back with you. 
Don't forget to watch us on Cable Access every Sunday and Monday at 9 a.m. Optimum Channel 18, Files Channel 46, and Comcast Channel 190. Also on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., you can watch our show on our YouTube channel, and you can also binge watch all of our old shows. Who doesn't want to keep watching The Pulse with Peter B? We'll see you there. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. And as you can see, I feel like Houdini today. I was on Washington Street in Hoboken for the first segment, then over with our friends at Hudson River Care and Counseling in the last segment over in Teaneck. But now we're here with another good friend of ours, and that is at Long Shot Pistol and Rifle, located at 375 County Avenue, suite number one. And Kevin, I never forget that, buddy. Um, and of course, we're here with Kevin Guarderas, who is the owner here. How are you today, sir? I just like the way you say that. I'm doing well, how are you? Exactly, who needs Josh, right? He can't even pronounce his own name. And, and No, 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 I'm tribe, I'm tribe friendly. I love uh, oh, Josh. Okay, all right, all right. I guess, I guess you are, we'll say. And uh, you're the only one. We found one, folks. Anyway, Kevin, so let's talk about CCW, Concealed Carry Weapon, yes, sir. correct? Yes, sir. So uh, this has been in the news a lot lately because of the Supreme Court ruling. Why has it been in the news? Well, on June 23rd, the Supreme Court uh, got it right, in our opinion here. They upheld our Second Amendment rights to carry concealed weapons or to carry a weapon. And um, what they did is they said, New York, you don't have the right to ask anybody applying for a CCW to show a special need. You just have to be a citizen who wants to protect themselves. And because New York's law was struck down and New Jersey and several other, several other states had a similar law, New Jersey's laws had to be uh, accommodated as well. So now overnight, we got Christmas came early in June, we've got the right to carry in New Jersey. There's a process, um, there's an application, there's education, there's a background check, but there is a path to carrying in public now. So ju just to be clear, this is this is a federal law, obviously, when you're talking about uh, the Supreme Court. But is it up to the states in terms of how the training regimen is? Yes. Well, it's a federal ruling, but they are state laws. Every every state is different. So the New Jersey law is different than New York law. Yes, there's a ruling. There's a law on the books uh, which determines who can carry, how you can carry, and the training you have to demonstrate for a thorough familiarity with your gun before you can carry. So you have to do a lot of training and you have to demonstrate your competency and all that is part of your application. There's the usual background check, the criminal check, the mental health check, but there are rigorous, rigorous um, goals that you have to show that you can hit. And in terms of vigor, vig, vigorous goals, because I, you know, I, I, for, for some reason I can't say that word. <laughs> um, um, you do conduct the training right here at Long we Shot do. Pistol and Rifle Sea Clock. Is Perfect segue. So I have my little cheat sheet here. We've got, eight, we've got 18 instructors here, all the resources you need. We have NRA instructors, we have former military instructors, and we have law enforcement instructors. Um, right now, what we find is there have been a lot of people who are interested in owning guns who had been sitting on the sideline because they said, you know, if I can own a gun in New Jersey, but I can't carry it and I can't you know, protect my family, I'm going to stay on the sidelines. Right. You would find people in Florida, Texas, Wyoming, Colorado, other more gun friendly states. They buy their guns and they they carry their guns all the time. So um, I'm welcoming all new people to the community to come in in a one stop shop. We're 20,000 square feet. We are a huge school, a huge store and a huge indoor training facility. Come in if you know nothing uh, about shooting, if you know nothing about concealed carry. By the time you leave and you have a nice tour and you, you talk to our people, you'll know everything there is to know to start on a training path to get certified. And, you know, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head there because, you know, you, you have people who were a little hesitant because uh, before the ruling. Correct. And now, I mean, you know, let's just be honest here because everybody knows where I stand on the political aisle. New sure. Jersey is as blue as it comes. Yes. But you're here in New Jersey. You're, you know, the federal law is the federal law, folks. Kevin is here for those people who are sitting on the sidelines. You don't have to go to a red state and uh, and you can come here and and. Uh, uh, obviously go through your training correct. And, and purchase any type of firearm as long as you have the credentials for it, correct? Well, no, not any type of firearm, but there are a wide variety of firearms that you can legally own, possess at home and carry. And, that, and that's what we are um, training towards. And that's what we're guiding our, 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 our customers towards. Correct. Okay. So now if, if, if I'm coming in here for CCW training, yeah. it's funny, we always bring it up at the top of the show. Um, what can I expect? Okay. That's a great question. I just want to Go like this. So here's what you can expect. You can expect uh, rigorous training, right? So it's not, hey, Kev, here's the questions I get. How many classes? 
how much it's going to cost me, and how long it's going to take. And our philosophy is to just to take a step back for a second and say, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know. Because it's not a cookie cutter answer for every person. It's not the same answer. Our philosophy is we're going to get to know you as a student. Think of it more like a dojo, right? And you're coming in like a grasshopper, and I am a sifu, right? So what's going to happen is we're going to start off with an evaluation. You're going to come in. We're going to talk to you for about 25, 30 minutes. We're going to go on the range. You're going to shoot 25, 30, 40 times. We're going to evaluate your, your safety, your muscle discipline, your marksmanship. We're going to evaluate you from A to Z. We're going to take a lot of notes, and we're going to come back to the classroom, and we're going to objectively show you who you are in a mirror. And it's eye-opening for a lot of people. There are a lot of people who've been shooting for a long time who think they're one type of shooter, and they're really a completely different type of shooter. And I'm talking about not only their skill set, but their mindset, right? their awareness. So when you have this in-depth evaluation, we can then say, OK, I classify you as a beginner, as an intermediate, and as an advanced. And based on our expert opinion, you need, well, you need this and this and this three things by law. But we also recommend for you in particular this, this, and this. So we call it a training path. So when you leave here, you'll know what your intermediate goals are and your final goals are. You'll have a budget, because we'll tell you right off the bat how much it's going to cost. And you will know how much time you can devote to it because some people can come once a week only. Come, some can come twice a week. And it makes a big difference you know, in how quickly you can achieve, achieve those goals. So our philosophy is let's take it easy. Let's get to know each other. Let's not rush through this. You really want to make a really strong application. In the state of New Jersey, if you get denied for a permit or you get denied for a license, it stays on your record forever. So forevermore, you're going to have to say that you were once denied. And that puts you in a completely different pile. So let's, let's slow it down. Let's answer, let's check all the boxes, but let's really focus on getting you prepared to carry in public. We don't really teach to an exam, right? I'm not an eighth grade biology teacher. You don't have to score on a standardized test. If you follow our training philosophy, you're gonna be rigorously trained. You're gonna have that competency, that self-confidence, and you'll have all the documentation that you need for application, but that's a collateral effect. You will be ready to carry in public if you do it our way. Incredible. And I have to tell you, just by you explaining that, I feel a lot more comfortable than anybody coming over here because right away, you know, the, the media and not the Pulse of Peter B. We always uh, present the facts, right, Kevin? Yes, sir. Um, but the media loves to, you know, just use bash, you know, oh, guns are getting in the wrong hands of people and so on and so forth. That's correct. And and you're, from what I understand, you uh, here at Long Shot Pistol and Ruffle, you guys are taking it almost a step further to make sure that, you know, a person might not be ready to carry but right. you know might need some more training and so on and so forth you know that's a great point i want to take it just take a time to, uh, a second to address that it's our one chance this is a christmas come unexpected right christmas come early absolutely but let's talk about what this is you're going to have a lot of people there are about a million gun owners in new jersey let's imagine 20 percent. that's the number i keep on hearing Two hundred thousand people are going to end up carrying or applying to carry and you if new you, people that is no no uh, out that's of the million, let's okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. okay, okay I'm no sorry. problem so that's a lot more guns on the street in the hands of people who are not cops, who are not been trained rigorously with a different mindset. These are just everyday mom and dads and, and people of all ages um, carrying guns, right? So my, my thought is this. I don't want to just tell somebody, well, the law says you have to do this and just this and go apply. That's serving nobody. That person's going to be unprepared, okay? It's not serving the general public because you're putting unprepared people in public. And it's not serving the two-way community to put a bunch of people out there carrying guns who, God forbid, they get into a situation where they have to use the gun and something goes wrong and there's a less than a perfect outcome. The media and everyone's in a, it's a huge backlash. We told you this is going to happen. New Jersey gun owners are a bunch of yahoos. They don't know what they're doing. We want none of that. We have the, the ability right now to redefine a narrative, mm -hmm. and to take leadership as an owner of a huge gun range. I'm the only gun range in the county. Okay, I'm the only gun range school and, um, and indoor, uh, excuse me, only indoor range gun school and gun store in the entire county. So I have thousands of people that are gonna, I'm gonna end up qualified. I don't need to run out there and try to grab everyone and go for a low price or for a low standard. How about we achieve a high standard and we get everybody prepared and we turn this on its ear and make it as good as possible for everybody. Wow. Well, Kevin Guarderas, I really appreciate it. This has been fun. I mean, I didn't know what to expect here, but um, I, you know, I, I certainly feel comfortable. Come visit him, 375, 375 that is, County Avenue, uh, suite number one, long shot pistol and rifle, Seacaucus, New Jersey. We hope to see you on a future show. Thank you so much. That's a promise or what? It's a promise. I like that, I really, really do. Thanks again, Kevin. Yeah. All right, folks, join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. I'm Peter Biancomano. I hope you have a great week, everybody.